from Elite Hair Care USA. So um, I wanted to kind of create this live because I have so many um, people, clients, um, just everybody that asks this question a lot. And I'm trying to get out of the shell of concealing a lot of information. You guys know I share a lot of information too. But um, I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of insight when it comes on to gray and coverage with color um, and some other good colors that you can utilize at home for gray coverage as well. First things first, if you're new to my channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to thumbs up this live as you come in because I am recording live. For those of you that are watching after the fact, um, the quality could go in and out. I am on Wi-Fi, but the information will still be here. So um, let's just get straight into it. The biggest question that I get whenever I'm doing um, my videos is um, in regards to gray coverage. What color is really good for gray coverage or what color is good for people who have gray hair? Um, I used to be one of the stylists where I just didn't really want to talk about it. You know, it was always about chemical services and you know, when it was time to talk about like demi-permanent and permanent colors, I won't talk about that. But when it comes on to semi-permanent gray coverage, because I know that I have so many of you who follow me or subscribe to my channel, I have no way or possibility of servicing over 300,000 people. So I'm just going to give the information because I know a lot of you really wanted this information. Um, so I guess we'll just get straight into it. People don't understand with gray hair when it comes on to hair color. Gray hair is a hair color that grows, okay? It is not a hair color that you wake up one day and say, you know what, I feel like I want to be gray today. Um, it can also be genetically inherited where you can have gray hair as, as, as young as a month to as old as 9,000 years old, right? So gray hair can come in at any point in time. There is no right or wrong time for it to come in. Um, over the last couple of years, I recently learned that you can get gray hair in places that you didn't even think that you could get gray hair. Um, why? Because I learned from experience. So yes, <laughs> gray hair comes in very odd places um, <laughs> at a very young age. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that right there. Um, so anything, any area of your body that gets hair can go gray, okay? Um, gray is not necessarily a color in so many words, um, but it has become a very popular or trendy thing at this point in time in life where people feel they need the need to color their hair gray or they actually want to be gray. Um, gray hair is also one of those things where it's very temperamental and it, it can come in very various textures. It can come very coarse and it can come very fine. That part really just depends on your genetics and what God gave you. But when it comes on to coloring gray hair, gray hair is actually one of the most stubborn hair colors and types to ever deal with when it comes on to hair color. So the biggest complaint when it comes on to gray hair color or gray coverage when you're trying to cover that gray is that the color does not last long. That's number one. Number two, the color does not take. That's number two. And number three, if it does take, it literally changes colors as it fades. That's number three. So this is the reason why I kind of wanted to make this video because there is a lot of question behind gray hair and there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes on to gray hair, right? So gray hair is one of the most resistant hair types that there ever is. Compare, they compare gray hair to the hair texture of Japanese hair. Japanese hair can also be very, very, very coarse in texture. That is just because of genetics. Um, it can also be compared to, to Brazilian hair, um, where Brazilians can have a mixture of hair where their hair can be very coarse. Same thing with Dominicans. So every culture, there's going to be a different dynamic because genetically, we're all made up different, right? Yes, we all pump red blood, but our genetics and our backgrounds are going to be very different. Some cross and some don't. Now with gray hair, when we're talking about hair color, you have to really understand your type of gray, okay? So there is multitudes of types of gray. There's coarse gray, there's fine textured gray, there's medium textured gray, right? 
There's low porosity gray. There's high porosity gray. There's natural gray. There's relaxed gray. And in between all of those types of grays that I've given you, there's also stubborn gray and not so stubborn gray. You can have fine textured, extremely stubborn gray, and you can also have coarse textured, extremely um, easy gray, right? So there's no right or wrong to this dynamic when it comes on to gray hair. So let's talk about when you are dealing with hair color. There are three different types of hair color, and I'll actually say there's four. There's four different types of hair color. There's henna, which is a natural form of color. Hi, daddy. There is semi-permanent hair color, demi-permanent hair color, and permanent hair color, okay? So those are the four categories. There are other natural forms of hair color, but I just put henna in one category all by itself because it is considered a natural form of hair coloring. It is also one of the hair colors that a lot of people like to run to because it is the one that lasts the longest. The reason why it lasts the longest is because of the way it is derived. But it is also the devil to any hairstylist that is actually trying to color or lighten your hair. It is not easily done. Okay? So then there comes permanent hair color. If you are one who goes into the store and you buy, <laughs> big, big up my dad. Somebody said pink boss. So when I seen that, I'm like, yeah, you've spoken to my dad, Sophia. you literally spoken to my dad. Um... If you've gone into the hair store and you've purchased a hair color that comes in a box, put a one in the chat. If you have ever gone into the hair store and purchased a hair color that comes in a box, put a one in the chat, especially for those of you that are gray. Okay. So for those of you that have gone into the hair store or into the, the drug store or into the grocery store and purchased a hair color that comes in a box that comes in many different companies, that hair color typically comes with a tube of color and a box with that tube of color to now make it work. Those are typically permanent colors. It's very rare that you will find a demi-permanent color in a box in a drug store. 90% of the colors that are on the shelf in a drugstore that are in a box are considered permanent color. Who can tell me why they're considered a permanent color? What makes them a permanent color? While we know the name, of course, makes it permanent. What other identifier tells you that it is a permanent color? There's something that's in that box that automatically tells you that this is a permanent color. What is it? I'm going to give you guys a second. If you know and you're watching this in the replay, put it in the comments. Thank you, Lee White, the developer, the peroxide, right? The developer. There's a developer in every box of color, right? So in that box of color, typically box color comes with either a 10 or a 20 volume developer. Why? Because those are permanent colors and anything that is above a 10 volume is now considered a permanent color. It is an oxidized color. Oxidized color is either demi or permanent. It's only one or the two. Also, how you can identify if that color is a demi or even a permanent is if it requires one and two to be mixed together to make them work. So if it requires a part A and a part B, that is considered to either be a demi-permanent or a permanent color. How you can determine if it's a demi versus a permanent, demi colors do not use anything above 10 volume, okay? So if it has a 10, a 20, a 30, a 40, or a 50 on that bottle in front of you looking at it, or if it lists it in smaller words on that bottle, that is now a permanent color. Demi-permanent colors are usually 0% up to about 6 or 7% peroxide mixed into that color. Those colors are considered demi-permanent colors, meaning they are deposit with a very minimal amount of lift. Permanent colors can lift 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 levels or even more. So that is what makes them permanent versus demi. Now, when I've been dealing with my clients in the salon, especially those who I know that I'm going to be applying color to, once I know that my client is relaxed, I try my hardest now to stay away from demi-permanent colors 
or even permanent colors unless I am completely changing their hair color. The reason why is because I found that my clients shed a lot more and the integrity of their hair is more compromised because relaxer and peroxide do not go hand in hand. They don't work well together and they don't work well when paired together, especially when you've just done a relaxer. So I've gotten more into the semi-permanent gray coverage colors and that's another reason why I decided to make this video so that you guys can see what colors are on the shelf that are somewhat great for, for gray coverage and what colors I would probably stay away from that are for gray coverage, okay? So let's say um, you are one that is more stubborn gray. Anytime you're dealing with colors that are outside of blacks and browns, I typically, for those clients, go into demi or, or permanent colors, okay? With a slight exclusion for reds and coppers. But reds and coppers are also the two colors that fade the fastest. So I try not to use too much of that in the semi-permanent line. And if I have a client that deals in those colors, I am typically using a demi-permanent or permanent color. Now you guys know when it comes on to demi and permanent colors, I do not recommend you do that at home. I prefer you go into a salon and go to a professional who understands color and also understands the integrity of the hair and hair care to do those colors. So today we're only going to talk about semi-permanent colors. And what I mean semi-permanent is typically for those of you that color your hair in black or in brown. Okay? So those are really the two colors that I'm talking about. Now, some not so good gray coverage colors. I hope you guys have your pen ready because there's a ton, but I'm only going to mention the ones that I've used before that I don't recommend for gray hair. Not so good permanent colors is jazzing. Jazzing does not do well for me in the colors of black and brown. Jazzing comes in that reddish color bottle and I'm gonna pull up some pictures for you guys. So I like to show pictures. Okay, so I'm gonna use this and I'm just gonna turn it around really quick. This color right here is called Clairol Jazzing. Now, Clairol has a number of lines, but this particular line, Jazzing, I don't recommend it when you are dealing with stubborn gray because all it is going to do is literally glaze the surface. It's not going to get anywhere near depositing into the hair, and it's not going to last as long as the more gray coverage or gray solution lines. Another reason why I don't suggest jazzing is because it has a green undertone. So for those of you that are always saying your hair has that slight greenness to it, jazzing has a green and sometimes a blue base, depending on if it's a blue black or a black. But it's not really the best when it comes on to coloring gray. Okay, so it's not the best when it comes on to coloring gray. Another line that I don't recommend for gray coverage is Adore. Adore is another one to me that does not cover gray very well, okay? And it also has a green or ash base in their darker colors. Most lines do, but I will give you guys a trade secret or an in-house pro tip towards the end of how to get rid of that green cast, no matter which black or brown color you're using, okay? Um, Ebony Scott, your question is a very good question. Why use a semi-permanent with gray at all? Well, let me answer that question for you. So when you're dealing with gray hair, if you're dealing with people who are gray and relaxed, you don't want to really go into demis and permanent colors because you get more of a residual problem, like a later on problem. They shed more. Their hair dries out a lot more. They end up having a little more, their hair doesn't feel as soft as it should. It actually is a little more coarse because those colors are the peroxide that's in that developer is interacting with the fact that the hair is relaxed and relaxer and color don't mix. Okay, relaxer and color permanent or oxidized color doesn't mix very well. And over time, it creates a bigger problem. So that is why semi-permanent color and relaxed gray hair actually works really well. Also, for those of you that don't understand color, semi-permanent is definitely the way to go for you to start having a better level of understanding with color before you jump head first. Okay. All right, so I hope I answered your question, Ebony. And that was a great question. That was definitely a great question. Um, and also, I mean, when you're trying to protect the integrity of the hair, let me explain something to you guys. 
Semi-permanent color can also work as what we call a filler, okay? So a filler is one of those that will fill in the gaps that are in the cuticle, giving the hair the appearance of looking a lot healthier and stronger. With gray hair, you need something that, because gray is one of those colors where it has no pigment, right? It's a neutral color. It's zero. It has nothing. So when you're trying to go from white to black, you have to put something in between to fill it, right? So with gray, the reason why it turns green or ash is because it's missing a pigment that leads up to that black. So you can't just go from white to black. If you mix white and black together, you get gray. So if you're going from gray hair and you want to go to solid black or brown, you're missing a ton of pigment in between the two that is going to take you from that point A to point B. This is all chemistry, you guys, but I'm still letting you guys know this because this is about the Heat Elite Hair Care Pro family. So you need to know as a pro what you're doing. So that's another reason why the hair turns green, because the first thing gray is going to pick up is the undertone. It's going to grab the undertone first. Once it grabs the undertone, then it starts to process that next level within in that color. That undertone is usually green or blue. But the biggest complaint for us, especially as African-Americans with our semi-permanent colors, is that it pulls green because the base of that color is green. You have to have a base color to get to that black. Right. So that's another reason why a lot of people try to stay away from semi-permanent colors because they don't want that undercast. They want it to oxidize, grab and soak it on in. Well, gray hair doesn't really do that. It grabs whatever is the base color first, which is usually the neutral. All right. I just went into straight hair school just now, but don't worry about that. I just was talking a whole bunch of everything for you guys just now. Um, other colors that I don't recommend for gray hair. I currently have a new bottle of Curl Semi-Permanent to use. It says no ammonia, no peroxide. My hair is not relaxed. Is it okay? Absolutely. While it might not last as long and you have to do it a lot more times than others, it's perfectly fine. Semi-Permanent color is a deposit-only color. All it does is deposit. It does not lift. Demi-Permanent is a deposit-only color as well, but it has a small amount of swelling of the cuticle as well. Okay, so demi-permanent colors can swell the cuticle to slightly, very slight, open them for that color to deposit. Permanent colors completely open the cuticle 100% and they literally oxidize and that in introduces that color. So semi-permanent colors are considered deposit only. So they will do no damage whatsoever to the hair because they only sit on the outer level or outer layer of the hair. Same thing with henna, but henna is one of those colors that is very hard to come back from if you decide that you want to go lighter, okay? Henna, you will literally eat up the hair trying to go lighter. So I'm going to show you guys um, another color. I'm just going to type in semi-permanent hair colors, and then I'll go through that. Thank you, guys. All right. So here's some other colors that I don't necessarily recommend for gray coverage. Remember, Clairol makes a lot of these colors, okay? So there's nothing wrong with the company. They just have different ones. Mm -hmm. So here's another one, this um, Clairol Professional Beautiful Collection. This particular collection does not cover gray very well for me. It actually just glazes the gray and leaves a little cast. The Bayesian or Biggin, theirs actually is somewhat okay, depending on the level of color that you're using. Theirs is actually closer to being good for gray coverage, but if you have extremely, excuse me, extremely stubborn gray, it doesn't do so well with extremely stubborn or coarse gray. Now let's talk about Kiss Color. Kiss Color can color anything. It can color your carpet. It can color your car seats. It can color your chicken. It can color your hair. It can color your animals. You can use it to paint your walls. This is literally liquid crack in a bottle, okay? The only downside to Kiss Color, this particular brand, which is the Kiss Express, is that it not only covers your gray, but it also covers your scalp and anything that it touches, okay? So yes, it will cover gray, but it will also cover anything that is around it, near it, or on it, okay? So if you want to cover your gray in a dark blue, best believe your entire scalp and anywhere that that color touches is going to be dark blue 
for quite some time. It is an amazing color for pigment, but it is not an amazing color for your skin. Manic Panic is a definite no. It does not cover gray. It barely grazes the gray. The gray. It barely does anything to the gray. It just kind of sits on there. Okay, so that's another one. Um, let's see here. This Adore, um, the Adore Extra Conditioning, <laughs> don't cover anything. It doesn't touch anything. It barely touches anything. Um, some other ones, let me see. This one right here, Via. This one typically is like $2 in a beauty supply store. This covers your skin. It covers nothing more than the skin. And I won't, I will, I will stand on that. It colors nothing more than the skin. Another one, this Kiss Temptation. Kiss Temptation, anything made by Kiss is going to color your carpet, your hair, your car seats, your fingers, your, your nails, your, your shirt, your it could color anything. This Kiss Temptation does not cover gray. It does not do well for gray to me. Okay. So those are some of the colors that I say do not do so well when it comes on to gray coverage. Now for me, there are two colors that I use in the salon semi-permanent for gray coverage. They are not the cheapest to buy. And the reason why is because they are considered gray formulas. Okay. They are considered gray formulas. The first one is the Clairol Beautiful Collection Advanced Gray. That I use for majority of my gray clients when it comes on to um, gray coverage, okay? So Clairol Beautiful Collection Advanced Gray, this bottle right here, I buy this in the bulk, okay? The only problem with this particular line is if the client is 100% gray. So gray is measured by percentage. You're 100 75, 50, or 25% gray, right? Now, for those clients who are solid white gray, the undertone or the base tone of this color, no matter which one it is, is ash. Ash can also be known to layman's terms as green. None of these colors have a base of blue. They all have a base of green slash ash, right? I'm going to give you guys the pro tip of how to get that ash color neutralized when you are going to cover your gray. But keep in mind that this color, no matter what client it is, it's always going to fade to a brassy, either brownish ash or a brown, always. But it covers gray, no matter if you are super resistant or if you are not resistant. I use it on relaxed and also natural clients. The only difference is for my natural clients who have that coarse hair, it leaves it more looking like a highlight and not a solid coverage. That is what we call gray blending, okay? So it can also be a gray blender for those of you that are coarse gray. So I hope that is helping you guys. Am I? If I'm confusing you guys, put a one in the chat. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. But this particular color right here, it is a little more costly in price. Usually it's like seven, eight dollars a bottle, but it is actually one of the ones that I can stand behind that I know it either blends very well with coarse hair or it covers 100% with not so coarse gray hair. Is this only for black people hair? Absolutely not. You can use it for any color hair, any person. But when you're dealing with textured or ethnic hair, our hair is more stubborn. So there are certain things that just doesn't work for our hair. Yes, the Clairol, this one works wonders. Like I you literally use this for all of my gray clients. Like I have not jumped around. If I'm not using this for my gray clients, then I'm now into the demi-permanent or permanent color. I have not found another color that is better than this as a semi-permanent outside of liquid crack kiss that literally colors my clients here. This color does an amazing job and hands down, I absolutely love this color. I have learned to master how to use this color. And that's another reason why I said I was going to share with you guys a pro tip to help you neutralize that green in that color. So what if you've been using color and want to go back to gray? How does that work? 
So if you've been using oxidized colors, colors that require an A and B, then I would highly suggest going into the salon and they have different systems that they can use that we call decolorizing the hair. It is not a very um, damaging thing, but you have to know how to do it and not everybody uses the same company's brand or same company's collection. So every company has a different product to do that, but it's called decolorizing. That's what it's called. Um, it can be also a form of um, color correction, but I try not to um, go too in depth with it. It's just something that you need to ask a stylist about, definitely. Okay, so who can tell me the three primary colors? There are three primary colors. What are the three primary colors? Very simple. This is now this now we're going to basic education now. What are the three primary colors? I'm going to pull up the color wheel so you guys. Thank you P Bristol. Red, yellow and blue. Red, yellow and blue are the three primary colors. Red, yellow and blue. Thank you. So the three primary colors are red, yellow, blue. Those three colors are three colors that is required to make any other color. So red, yellow, and blue is the required colors to make any other color. Now who can tell me what the secondary colors are? What are the secondary colors? So we now know red, yellow, and blue are primary colors. What are the secondary colors? What are secondary colors? So there's primary, there's secondary, there's tertiary, there's so many. So there's three primary and there's three secondary. What are the three secondary colors? Orange, green, and purple. Thank you, P. Bristol. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the camera around because this is how you understand how to neutralize colors. And this is a part of the color wheel. This has nothing to do with, oh, I'm a hairstylist, no. This is how you neutralize colors no matter what you're doing. As long as you're trying to neutralize the color, this is what is going to tell you what to use. Okay, so this is the color wheel. If you guys see here, these are the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Over here, the secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. Where they are located on the color wheel is extremely important because they also tell you what you use to cancel what, okay? So here is the primary color, yellow, red, blue. Then we have the secondary colors, which in hair color, it's known as violet, not purple. So then we have purple, green, and orange. So if you look at the color wheel, the color that sits directly across from that primary or secondary color is the canceling color. So whenever you have brassy hair, brassy hair, you always go for a blue based color or a blue based shampoo or whichever to cancel out that brassiness of that orange. No matter what shade of orange it is, you're always going to go towards blue because that is the canceling color. It sits directly opposite of it on the color wheel. So if your hair has turned green because it has a green base from the hair color, who can tell me what color you're going to need to cancel out that green within that color? What color are you going to need to cancel out the green in that color? Thank you, Lori Hudson. Red. Why? Because red can cancel green and same way green can cancel red. Okay, so if you're dealing with gray hair and the base color of that gray hair, gray color is green or ash, and you start noticing that your hair has turned green after coloring your hair. If your hair has turned green after coloring it, the next time you go to color your hair, you need to add just a little bit, maybe a drop or two of red into your hair color. So if I'm coloring a client whose hair turned green after their hair color faded, I'm now going to add a couple drops, no more than a few drops of red to my color, which might be black or brown, mix it up really well. And when I put it on my client's hair, it is now going to neutralize that green. If you don't add the red to that color, all you are doing is intensifying that green and it's still going to be an undertone of the black or brown that you put on your hair. Okay. 
So that is how you cancel out colors. Same thing with those of you that are wondering how to get rid of that yellow tint that is on your gray hair. What color or what color, I'm going to say it this way, what color shampoo am I going to use to tone out the yellow cast or brassy yellow from that gray hair? If I have my hair turning yellow, your gray has that brassiness. Thank you, L. Nicole. You are going to use a violet-based shampoo, not purple. In hair color, we don't say purple. We say violet, okay? So as a pro, you're going to say violet. You are going to use a violet-based shampoo to cancel out that yellow or brassiness that you have on that gray hair. If it was a orangey color, then you're going to use a blue-based shampoo to cancel out the brassiness in that hair. So I hope I didn't confuse you guys. That was a little bit of art slash hair color. Hair color uses the color wheel. There's no change to the color wheel. We don't um, manipulate the color wheel. The color wheel is the color wheel. Whenever you are confused and you notice that you have a tinge of green and you can't remember what is needed to cancel some of that green out when you go to recolor your hair, look at the color wheel. Whatever sits across from green, which is red or even orange, you can even drop a little bit of copper because copper can't be made without red. Copper needs red and yellow, always a primary color. Violet needs red and blue, always primary colors. Green needs yellow and blue to make a primary, to make that green. That's how you make the secondary color. So all of this information goes hand in hand when you're dealing with gray hair because gray hair is considered a blank canvas. It is a blank piece of paper. It is white. Even when you're gray, it's considered white hair. So when you have gray hair, you are working with a blank canvas and you have to know to fill that canvas with certain things to lead yourself into certain colors. That's why I tell people don't mess with hair color unless you understand hair color. It's all chemistry and art, period. Okay, so I hope this information helped you guys in regards to knowing what colors are good to deal with gray hair, what colors are not good to deal with gray hair. I even went in detail talking about how to cancel out colors. For those of you that is always dealing with brassy gray hair or you want that silver fox look, violet-based colored shampoo is always going to be your best friend. Violet-based shampoo is going to be your absolute best friend, okay? So there was a little secret that I had, and I didn't tell you guys about the little secret. The only reason why I didn't tell you guys about the little secret is because I did not want to drop this bomb before time, right? Um, so number one, we are working on a violet-based shampoo, but it's not there yet. We're working on one, but it's not there yet. Um, I recognize I have a lot of silver foxes and I work, recognize that I have a lot of people that want a violet-based shampoo that helps to cancel out the yellow. We are working on that as we speak, but it is not ready yet. Now, there is something that I have been silently working on that I did not really share with you guys, um, mainly because it just wasn't something that I, I was ready to talk about yet, right? So we have officially received, finally, our Goddess Growth Gummies. So these are a exclusive Elite Hair Care USA formula, hair, skin, and nail vitamin in a gummy form. So you no longer have to take a capsule. It is now in a very good, it tastes really good, it's fruity. I had one today, just so y'all know. I have I had it today, um, but it's nice and fruity. Uh, they taste really, really good. So they also are a hair, skin, and nail vitamin. I do not believe in just biotin. You cannot give the body one thing and expect it to do something else. So this is a hair, skin, and nail growth vitamin, okay? So I said I would go over just what is in it. Number one, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, okay? Um, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, biotin. So there's 6,000 micrograms. MCG means micrograms. 6,000 micrograms of biotin. There's 1,200 micrograms of vitamin A. There's 30 milligrams of vitamin C. 10, mi 10 micrograms of vitamin D. 18 milligrams of vitamin E. 
um, eight milligrams of vitamin B12. B12 gives you energy. Nobody don't want a burst of energy from a hair, skin, and nail vitamin, but it gives you about 12. <laughs> it gives you about eight micrograms of B12. Um, B6, there's two milligrams. Micrograms and milligrams are different, just so you guys know. Um, pantothenic acid, 10 milligrams, which is also known as calcium. Um, iodine, for those of you that are deficient, um, there's 80 micrograms of iodine. There is 2.7 milligrams of zinc. Zinc is good for those of you that are dealing with hair loss. If you have um, autoimmune diseases, we're typically deficient in zinc. Zinc is another good one, especially for those of us. Am I having a baby? Hell no. Hell no. What? No. Hell no. Um. Don't, don't, don't come drop no bomb like that on my life again, please. Don't be disrespectful. Okay. Um. <laughs> Jado. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just gave me hives. What? Christian, my kid is about to be nine years old. You saw my somebody? Come here, son. My son is about to be nine. Don't do that again. I am not Janet Jackson. I look like I'm hard up for a mother kid. I have three. I am good. Thank you. Son. How old you turn in April? Come, come over here. Come over here. Come grace the people with a nine-year-old. Come over here. Come, come, come check me. Come check me. How old are you, son? Eight. And you're about to be what? Nine. When? April 24th. Okay. You're about to be nine, right? Yes, sir. All right, good. Go on back, go play your game. I watch your TV. Nine. He's about to be nine. We are not short of a kid. It has to be an act of God for another kid to come here. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Let me clean up my chort, my tribe. <clears throat> Boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can I recommend a gloss brand for shine? So we have our shine booster treatment. And we also have, excuse me. We also have the Goddess Polish that drops on April 1st. The Shine Booster Conditioning Treatment is available now on our website at EliteHairCareUSA.com. So yes, these babies, we call them Goddess Growth Gummies, are, um, I'm going to put them on the site actually within the next few minutes. Um, I said I was going to do a launch, but I'm not going to do a launch on these. These are just going to drop. The launch is going to come on April 1st with the other items. But these are just going to drop sometime today. It's 60 in a jar or a bottle. Um, it's two per day. That's all you need. Two per day. They're fully gummy. You can put them right at your bathroom sink, pop two, and go on about your day. You can even give them to your children, okay? I don't know why people think there's a difference between children vitamins and adults. I'd rather give my children the adult vitamins because they're dealing with adult problems, not children problems anymore. The only difference is sometimes they contain a little bit more, like, um, it might have a little more vitamin C because children are always sick, that kind of thing. But honestly, a vitamin a day keeps the doctor away. It don't matter which one you're doing. Can everything be ordered on your website? Absolutely. EliteHairCareUSA.com. <laughs> My dad is so funny. Why would y'all say that? My father's sitting on the live. Are you serious? I don't need to stop it, mine. The sugar percentage, um, let's talk about the sugar. Four grams of sugar. Four grams of sugar. And that's per serving. There's four grams of sugar per serving. So if you have to do, let's say you're doing keto, then you'd probably just do one. But you're still getting benefit from it. You just get half of it. So, Leah, we are actually working on the body care site. We have some different things coming. Um, this is one, which is the botanical yoni wash that contains boric acid. So, our body care site, we're actually going to roll it back out. We're going to do a full launch of the body care site. But for the body care site, because we know that a lot of you like to shop on Elite Hair Care, and we're going to take the body care items and put them on the body care site by themselves, the body care site shipping will be free. 
So you won't have to worry about, oh man, I got to go two places to order. Well, the body care site, the shipping is free because it's all body care items. So you won't have to pay shipping over there for the body care. My products are on Amazon, but they keep selling out. So we have to restock on Monday. They keep selling out. They're on Amazon, but they keep selling out. Oh, Fichard, um, the other brand of color, there is none. When I thought about it, I was going to say the Bigging or Bayesian color. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't even recommend it. It's too unpredictable depending on the hair type. So that's another reason why I kind of didn't say that second one. The main one would be the Beautiful Collection come at Gray Advanced Color. That's the reason why, because I know that that, that literally has covered every type of gray that I've dealt with. The big in or Bayesian one, that one is unpredictable based on the hair type. You will end up spending a lot of time for nothing. Also, gray coverage, semi-permanent colors needs to be on the hair for at least a minimum of 25 minutes. That's another thing that people go wrong. It needs to sit on the hair without dryer. No dryer. Just sit on the hair for a minimum of 25 minutes. Okay? And when you apply it, it needs to be applied correctly. It needs to saturate the hair. Um, Rhonda, yes, we've been on here for 41 minutes. You definitely missed it, but this video will be available for replay. All of the gray information is the first 30 minutes of the video. So yes, you missed a little bit. All right, so now I'll just do a couple Q&A questions. I know you guys have some. <clears throat> So you can ask a couple Q&A questions. I'll answer those questions now. Do you use a processing cap? When I process my gray coverage clients, I do not use a processing cap. I found it to have more success when the cuticle does not open. So when you put a processing cap on the head and you introduce any form of heat, you typically end up opening the cuticle and now you're not going to get saturated coverage. You're not going to get full coverage. So what I do is I make sure that I fully saturate the head. I use a bowl and brush to apply my color and then I comb it through and I allow my client to sit for a minimum of about 25 minutes, but a maximum of about 30 minutes. Is the Beautiful Collection good on dark hair too? Absolutely. My only problem with the Beautiful Collection is if you're not coloring gray, I wouldn't really use it. If you're not coloring gray, you can use Jazzy, you can use Billion, you can use any other color. But if you're coloring gray, then you can stick with that. Rhonda, don't worry. You can watch the replay, baby. It's cool. Do the vitamins have any other ingredients like salt, palmetto, silica, silica horsetail? Uh, no. It just has the mains. It has silicone, it has collagen, um, it has PABA. Mm, I mean, it has like flavorants. The flavorants are not even, they're more like juice, juice flavorants, um, passion fruit flavor, carrot juice, glucose, citric acid. That's really it. What violet shampoo do you recommend? Anything but shimmering lights. Stay away from the damn shimmering lights. Shimmering lights, shimmering lights is just a no. Um, for me, right now, while we're developing the violet-based shampoo, I use Pravana. Pravana has one called Perfect Blonde or Fanola. Fanola is another one. They also make no orange. They make no yellow and they make no orange. The no orange is a blue-based shampoo. The no yellow is a violet-based shampoo. They have really, those two lines are really, really good with the violet-based shampoos. Do you have to rinse it in cold water after each conditioner? Yes. It's intense, but I do. Can you do a protein treatment the same day as a beautiful collection before or after? So Hobby Hobbit, that's a very good question. Whenever you're covering gray, you want that to be the last thing that you do to the hair before you rinse it out in style, right? So I would definitely do your protein treatment first, your shampoos first, all of that stuff. You do that first, get that out of the way. Then you do your gray coverage color. That is the last thing that you put on your hair before you rinse it and style it. We do not sell hair color on our website. I am not a hair color seller. When I do sell hair color, it'll be an elite brand. I just ordered your hair growth bomb. I can't wait to get it. You are going to absolutely love it. 
Do you have, have you had good testimonials? Absolutely. And we actually have a review site on the website called Luke's. If you go to that product, you'll be able to see the reviews. And my daughter, you look like you need to get some rest. Yep. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm about to go to bed. I am. I'm just about to go to bed. I just said I'd do the live that evening. I said I'm going to go to bed. Um, I don't know anything about the prebiotic Octavia, so I couldn't really tell you. But we do have a um a probiotic coming on the body care side soon. So we have a lot of different things for body, like the for the for JJ. So we'll be bringing back a lot of different things, and we'll also be dropping a lot of different things on that site. The biotin, the biotin is six thousand micrograms, six thousand micrograms per serving. That's per serving. For those of you that like to go by 50,000 micrograms of biotin, you don't need that much. The body expels most of it. Um, Cynthia, I can't really advise you on the Humira injections. I definitely say speak to your physician about that. Are they organic? No, they're not organic. Mm -mm. If they are, I would definitely highlight that they are organic. But no, they are not organic. And honestly, what makes it organic is the flavorings and things that they use around it. That's really the only thing that will make it organic. Um, 